Welcome back. In the previous segment, we motivated the need for member functions. In this segment, we are going to talk about vectors from physics and then later on see how they how they can be implemented using member functions. Uh, the operations on the vectors can be implemented using member functions. Okay, so we have already talked about this. So say you are writing a program involving velocities and accelerations of particles which move in three dimensional space, then you would find it natural to represent the vectors using a structure with members x, y, z. So V3 is the structure type, okay, so for three dimensional vectors and its members are x, y and z which are all doubles. And of course other representations are also possible. So how do you use this struct V3? Okay. Well, there could be several operations that you might want to perform. So for example, you might take two vectors and add them up together. Okay. So a function, an ordinary function which does this would look something like this. So you have, you have this function name and this function is going to return an object of type V3 or a structure of type V3 and it is going to take arguments which are also of type V3 and we are taking arguments by reference. So first it is going to create internally a V3 object uh, called V and this is going to be our result. So what is the result going to look like? Well its X component is going to be the sum of the X components of these two objects. Okay. Similarly the Y, similarly the Z. Okay. Then you could have a scaling operation, okay. so which takes a vector and a scale factor and simply multiplies the scale factor uh, with each of the members and so the resulting vector is going to be returned. As you remember this, this operation is going to return this vector that means the values will get copied in some suitable place in that calling program. Here is another possible operation that you may want with vectors which is a length operation. Okay. So the length operation simply, simply takes a single vector and it returns the square root of the sum of the individual members. Okay. So these might be some operations that you might want to perform on your uh, structure type, on objects of your structure type V3. Well, here is an example of use of uh, vectors in which these operations can come in quite handy. And this is so called motion under uniform acceleration. Okay. So we have a particle which has initial velocity u and uniform acceleration a. Then its displacement at time t s is given as u times t plus a t squared by 2 and this is applicable even if u, a and s are vectors and t is a scalar, it is a, it's a time. To find the total distance covered or the total displacement rather, you must take the length of the vector s. Okay. So this might be what our program looks like. So we have V3. Uh, we have three vectors of type V3, u, a and s, okay, velocity, acceleration and displacement. And first we read values into u and a. Okay. Next we, we could calculate this for a single value of t but just for fun we will calculate it for multiple values of t. So t ranging from say 0 through 9. Okay. So what will this how will we do it? Well, so S is going to be sum of these two quantities and what are these two quantities? Okay. Well, they are U scaled by T okay, and then A scaled by T squared upon 2. Okay. So what is going on here? A is a vector, scale of A and T squared by 2 is also a vector. Okay. That vector and scale of U times T are being added up and the result is this sum 
is this displacement s and this displacement is also a vector. Okay? So, this looks like an ordinary assignment, but really it is it is more complicated than that. When you when you look at an ordinary assignment, you are tempted to think of it as sort of basic data types. Whereas over here, three components are being assigned in parallel or three components are being passed to this function and this function is returning three components. So is this. Okay? So then we print out as a function of t the displacement that has that has happened okay and and that's it so that's the program okay so as you can see we could have written this program by accessing each component of us and t but rather than that we chose to use these functions some scale and length and uh, the reason for that is that they reflect better what operations we are actually performing and furthermore once you once you or somebody writes those operations some scale and length and tests them and make sure that they are right then you can be more confident that your code is actually correct okay okay so let's do a quick demo so first we have uh, the structure type then the sum then the scale the length and then we have the main program okay so it's really what we what we saw on the slides so let's just run uh, compile it and run it so now we are supposed to type in the velocities and the accelerations. So just so that we can see what is going on, let me type the initial velocity to be 0 and let me type the acceleration to be say 1. Okay. So this is a plot of what happens to the particle as a function of time. Okay. So by, by making these things simple, you should be able to check that these are in fact the correct answer answers. So what is going on over here is I guess you can think of it as a particle which is initially at rest is moving say maybe falling down due to gravity or something like that. Okay. Okay, now we could ask can we do the same thing with member functions? Okay. And uh, uh, this is how it looks like. So here we have a member function which calculates the length and that member function is being called over here. This red, red text is the call of that member function. Okay? So length is a member function. You can see it is inside the structure definition and a member function f of a structure uh, structure type uh, x should be invoked on a structure s of this type x by writing s dot f of arguments which is exactly what has happened over here. So v is a structure of type v3 and we are invoking this function on v by writing v dot length. There are no arguments specified over here. So no arguments are given here as well. Okay? Now this S or this V is called the receiver of the call. So there is another, another analogy here as well that this part is sometimes even called a message being sent. A message is being sent to this object and that object responds. Okay? So that is that's another metaphor that is used. But anyway we are going to call this, call this thing before the dot as the receiver of that call. Okay. So in v dot length v is the receiver okay. and uh, it is a function call. So like all function call calls it executes by creating an activation frame. Okay. And the reference to the members or the body of the definition of the function refer to the corresponding members of the receiver. So see this you have x dot x 
y dot y z dot z, what are these x y z? Well, they are these, but as far as these calls are concerned, they are members of the receiver. So, this x dot x, when this call is being made, will actually refer to v dot x, this will refer to v dot y, this will refer to v dot z. Okay. Yeah, so when v dot length executes, x, y, z refer to v dot x, v dot y, v dot z. So as a result of this, v dot length is going to return 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared uh, plus 2 squared again its square root or so 1 plus 4 plus 4, 9 square root of that is 3. Okay. Now the, the, the receiver itself is also an argument, okay. I mean otherwise how would you know what this x means? So uh, this receiver is an argument okay. and uh, uh, it is it's kind of a hidden argument. Well, it is not really hidden, it is actually up front, it is really at the front. Okay. So it is kind of a special argument, but it is not there in the argument list, in the parameter list. All right. But it is an argument nevertheless. And uh, it is an argument which is passed by reference. So in this code, if you change x, then the x member of v is going to get changed. Okay? So, it's, so this v is being passed by reference, that is why this happens. If v, v was passed by value, then if you change x, that would not be, that would not happen. But, but indeed, the, the receiver is passed by reference. So, we can write the other functions as member functions and here is the complete definition. Okay? So, this is our struct v3, the members, then this is the first member function that we just saw. Okay? This is the sum, the sum operation written as a member function. So sum of v3, well v3 and what? We need two arguments to make the sum. Now that sum, the first argument is the receiver itself. So coming over here, okay, so we are doing ut dot sum of at by 2. Okay. So ut is one v3 which is being added to at by 2 which is another v3. Okay. So in this case, this b is going to be at by 2 and uh, ut is going to be the receiver for this. Okay? All right. So now what, how does this function work? We are supposed to add up the two vectors and pass the resulting vector. So we are going to create that result over here. v3 of v is, is going to be our result vector. Now the x, the x member of this should be the sum of this uh, ut's x and this at by 2's x. So this is ut's x and this is at by 2's x, similarly y, similarly z. Okay? And then we return this vector. So that is how this sum works. Okay? Scale is similar. For the scale, so we have u dot scale of t, so u is the receiver and t is the argument. Okay? So t is this, the value of t is placed in f. So again, what are we calculating? We are supposed to calculate a result which is a v3 vector but which is a scaled version of the receiver. So to implement that, this is the x member of the receiver, we scale it up by f and put it in the x member of our result v3. And so we construct all v3, uh, the 3 vx, vy, vz and then we return v. How does it look like in this function? Well, we wanted to calculate u times t, so that is scaling, so we the partial result we have put over here. Then we wanted to calculate a t squared, so that is a times scaling by t squared by 2, okay? so a dot scale of t squared by 2 and then we have to add up these two things, so that is what is happening over here. Finally, we have to take the sum of uh, uh, the, 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 the length of that sum. Okay, and so that is happening over here. And I should say that we do not necessarily need to have so many variables if we do not want. What is happening over here is we are going to scale okay, and then the result is going to be summed with the scaled version of this. 
okay. And that we can take the length, uh, we can apply the length uh, member function to this entire result and we are going to, we will then get the length. So here we can think of this as sort of one long complicated expression. Instead of that we have broken up that expression into three separate expressions which are of course related. So what have we discussed? So we have discussed the syntax of member functions. We have said that a member function is physically placed inside the struct definition and we said that a call to a member function looks like receiver dot function name followed by the arguments. The member function executes like an ordinary function with the receiver being an additional argument and uh, the syntax makes the receiver look very different and indeed it is very different, it has a special relationship. Okay. It really, so the, the, there, is a, there is a nominal special relationship in that uh, uh, the receiver is being definitely passed by reference. But in addition to that somehow if I write uh, say uh, v dot something then I know that this is something which is happening and it has some special special meaning in the context of v usually. Okay. Or it tells me that look this the, the, uh, the code for this function will, will be found in wherever v is itself defined. Yeah, we also said that the receiver is implicitly passed by a reference okay? and so the call can actually modify the members in the receiver. And, and this syntax is reasonable but you might ask, well did we really need it? Could we have used the usual function call syntax? Okay? So that is, that is not quite clear yet but it will become clear quite soon. Okay? So we will take a quick break over here.